We have now come to one of the most anticipated moments of our event, the address by our distinguished chief guest. It is indeed a great honor for us to have with us today someone who has remarkable contributions in his field and continues to inspire others through his leadership, dedication, and achievements. Professor Dr. Fezan Mustafa is the Vice Chancellor of Chanakya National Law University, Patna. He was the Founder Vice Chancellor of National Law University, Odisha, and Vice Chancellor of Nalsa University of Law for 10 years. He has also served as Dean in Faculty of Law, oh, Aligarh okay. okay. Muslim <laughs> University. Thank you. He has been a source of inspiration to many and continues to be a guiding light in the community and beyond. Please join me in welcoming Sir with a big round of applause. Vice Chancellor Sir, Madam OSD and uh, Sir OSD Mahmoud Sahib, Registrar Sahib, uh, faculty colleagues, uh, Mrs. Mustafa, and uh, since we signed an MOU uh, initially uh, with Manu when I was in Nalsar, so we have representation of Nalsar, so Kaif Siddiqui is here uh, to represent Nalsar. Uh, it all started like this, that uh, Professor Sayyid Anul Hassan Saab was appointed as the Vice Chancellor and just like uh, his two predecessors, when I congratulated him on his appointment as vice chancellor, thinking that it will not be done as his illustrious predecessors have not done, I just mentioned casually that, sir, law school when I And I am so grateful to him that uh, he took it seriously because after three days, uh, someone forwarded me uh, his interview, I think the first interview uh, with ETV Urdu, uh, where while listing his priorities, he said that I would set up a law school. And he proved to be a man of his words, and the law school is very much here. Of course, at some very huge personal cost to me, because uh, Madam referred to it, but did not elaborate, but lawyers have to be blunt, and I am a professional, so I am blunt. <laughs> Mrs. Mustafa is very upset with me, because the building was supposed to go to the School of Science, <laughs> and it has been given to School of Law. And that's why she always says, the law is getting all the priority, while it is sciences which should get the priority. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. The kind of building you have got, let me tell you, when Bangalore Law School started, it started in a car garage. And Nalsar started in a Bhut Bangla in Hyderabad. So there was one IAS officer uh, who in service passed away, and then nobody would occupy that bungalow. When law school was, Nalsar was established, and they were searching for some building, no building was available, and therefore that bungalow was given. So with this kind of centralized AC, and some of your rooms are not yeah, even... <laughs> <laughs> then it is fine. But we are really grateful to uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, uh, for uh, uh, first believing in us, and then giving us state-of-art uh, infrastructure, then creating teaching positions, uh, recruiting people, and then uh, pursuing matter with the Bar Council of India uh, and getting your recognition uh, before we even admitted you. And we had, as the Registrar Sir rightly said, uh, the inauguration of the Moot Court Room even prior uh, to your admission. And I, as your mentor, keep telling people about Manu Law School, and that's why I'm very glad that I'm right now uh, persuading few people to institute the first gold medal for Manu Law School in the name of uh, uh, A.G. Nurani, who I consider to be one of the uh, greatest uh, constitutional scholar of independent India. I'm also persuading that maybe we institute uh, some annual uh, endowment lecture in his name. 
And as I said last time when I spoke uh, that uh, Manu Law School should get some big project uh, in terms of uh, uh, translation and study of uh, huge treasure which is available uh, within the city of Hyderabad uh, in terms of high court judgments in Urdu and in terms of several farmans of Nizam uh, which have huge uh, significance for our uh, uh, legal and uh, constitutional history. Now, a uh, few personal things uh, to tell you about the importance of your course. So many years ago, when I was about to complete law, I saw a cover story of India Today. And the cover story was from Lal Bahadur Shastri Academy in Masuri, where IS officers do their training. And it was based on that survey as to what is the dowry market rate of different professionals. So for engineer at that point of time, it was uh, 5 lakh. And for uh, doctors, it was 10 lakh. And for IES officers, it was 15 or 20 lakhs. And there was a last line which had said that if you are a lawyer like me, you pay two lakhs. That was a situation. And then I thought, khak sara ne jahara bahikarat manigar. And today we have reached that point that few years back when I was at the Higher Education Task Committee of Government of India, and we had an economic recession. This was in 2009. And in uh, that meeting, uh, IIT Khadakpur uh, uh, director, Professor Acharya, was uh, with me. And he said that uh, he is not able to place uh, the IIT students. You must have read recently that uh, this year again, IIT uh, Mumbai uh, is having a very bad year of placement with the average salary of about uh, uh, 4 lakh rupees per annum. So I said, well, I have placed everybody. And he said, how come in a recession? So I said, lawyers make money whether companies incorporated or the winding up of companies happening. Both ways you need lawyers. So there is no duty to learn anything. Of course, if uh, I see some uh, uh, people who are graduates of madrasas, and I have a very high respect for them, uh, about uh, the Qanun Miras, the law of succession, uh, our beloved prophet uh, has said that it is half of the religion. So if you marry, that is another half of the religion, and you know law of inheritance, just law of inheritance of Islam. While here you will be taught Hindu law, Christian law of succession, Indian law of succession, and of course Muslim law of inheritance. I am telling you that at a time when I did law, the market said that if you want to marry, of course she did not charge me anything, <laughs> then you have to pay two lakh rupees. The situation is if you become the best cardiologist today, you will do three to four operations. Each operation will cost patient about five lakh rupees. Out of that five lakh, if you are Ashok Seth, if you are the top cardiologist, then you will, I'm telling about that, and you are in the top uh, hospital, Medanta or AIG, this five star like hospitals. So five lakh, and he will do three or four operations. Out of that 5 lakh, 3 lakh will go to the hospital. The doctor will get about a lakh and a half. If he is really number one, 2 lakhs. So in a day, a doctor, a top-notch uh, cardiologist will make about 6 lakh rupees. If he is a neurologist, he may make 10 lakh rupees. Any idea how much lawyers make? In United States, many of them charge $20,000 per hour for the preparation of the case. 
I myself have paid one lawyer of Supreme Court when I just had a handshake with him and I asked him, I'm reading the date of the date. He sent the bill for 37,000 rupees. Don't get your hand to any doctor. It's very costly. From a lawyer. So there are any number of lawyers in India today in high courts as well as in supreme courts who charge 11 lakh per case per day and they do minimum of 10 cases. So one crore is, is hundreds, probably thousands of lawyers are like this. But there are some top league lawyers who charge one crore per case per day. Kapil Sibbal charges 85 lakhs per case per day. Abhishek Manu Singhvi charges 85 lakhs as well. And have you ever seen any income tax rate on a lawyer's residence? No income tax officer can dare. So there is no profession which empowers as much as law empowers. It is an empowering profession. People get scared of you. Administration gets scared of law students, vice chancellors and dean and proctors and provosts because lawyers and law school teachers have this kind of tendency. We first teach them about law, then they experiment law on us. <laughs> it's a difficult lot to deal. In all countries in the world, wherever you had colonialism, the freedom struggle was led by lawyers. So one lawyer was thrown out of a train compartment in South Africa, and that lawyer threw the mighty British Empire out of India. That is the power of lawyers. So Motilal Nehru was a lawyer, Jawaharlal Nehru was a lawyer, Sardar Patel was a lawyer, Jinnah was a lawyer, Obama is a lawyer, the new British Prime Minister is a lawyer. Whether BJP has 240 or 300 doesn't matter. But since independence, every single parliament had majority of lawyers as members. It is only the course of law which gives you maximum career options. Just three days ago, Bihar Judicial Services mains result has come. So CAF in Aligarh, maybe 10 people will qualify. From Chanakya National Law University, 127 people had qualified. From one batch, 65. So from this class, people who will be in the first batch, I am sure that at least 10 of them uh, would become judges in different states in India. And that will be the long-term impact of initiative which Honorable uh, uh, Vice Chancellor has taken. And the competition of judiciary is the easiest competition in India. If you write civil services, so MBBS, IM, IITN, Zoology, Botany, Masters, graduates from all subjects will write the exam. For judicial service, only law graduates can write. And civil services is a central exam. Judicial services is a state level exam. You are just competing with your fellow law students, with your own peer. And that's why it's the easiest exam. If you are not an idiot, you will become a judge. <laughs> yeah, my guarantee. Hai. If you are willing to study four hours a day from now on, and then for four months after your LLB, sincerely you study 14, 15 hours, judiciary ho gaya. In civil services also, there is an advantage if you have done law, because in the essay paper, in the general studies paper, uh, and then in the law paper, you score high marks. Every bank has a legal advisor. 
you cannot have a company without a legal advisor, without manager law. You cannot have an insurance company without a legal advisor. So banks need lawyers, insurance companies, corporates need them, judges are to be appointed, government prosecutors are to be appointed, CBI has lawyers, ED has lawyers, and that is why all political parties nominate lawyers to Rajya Sabha because they cannot afford their fee. Recently, Abhishek Manu Singhvi, because he failed in Himachal, somebody, uh, Keshav Rao, I think, was made to resign, who was a Rajya Sabha MP from Telangana, so that Abhishek Manu Singhvi can become. That's why Sibbal is there and Chidambaram is there. All lawyers end up in Rajya Sabha because political parties cannot afford their fees. Therefore, they compensate them by taking them to Rajya Sabha. Come to the theme of your fresher party, which is uh, far more important. And as lawyers, and since Tabrez is also a very uh, beloved and uh, 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 respectful student of mine, I'm very proud of him. Law school should also learn. Law sh school should also learn utmost professionalism. So how a fresher party is to be conducted? How a lecture is to be conducted? Walden ka bada hitram hai. Yaqeenan walda ke qadmo ke niche jannat hai. Or wali sahab jannat ka darwaza hai. Par appropriate nahi tha is setting mein. Sorry. Relevant. What evidence can be given? And for a law school like Manu, isko bilkul madar samad banai hai. Be a professional, ruthless professional. पूरी यूनिवर्सिटी में नात के कंपटीशन होते हैं जरूर होने चाहिए ईद मिलादुन नबी है खूब खुशियां मनाइए रहमत व बख्शिश का मौसम है जरूर सब हो लेकिन लॉयर्स की जो बहस होती है वो अलग होती है टाइम मैनेजमेंट आई वुड वेरी स्ट्रांगली फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल अर्ज द डीन एंड देन रिक्वेस्ट द वाइस चांसलर दैट द timetable which a law school has to follow will not be the same with Manu. It cannot be. Because for two months you have to go for internship. We have to create that space. From next year your classes must start somewhere on 28th June for the senior batches and from 1st of July for the junior batches. All your exam, everything must finish by October so that November and December you are on internship. You have to be in courts, you have to be with NGOs, with the corporates, then only you will get jobs. Otherwise you will not get jobs. To get a good job, law in books is one thing, but you have to learn it hard way by going to the field. And therefore the holiday scheme which university will have fresher party one week which university has is not to be followed in law school. You make your own uh, uh, fresher uh, week uh, uh, timetable because if you do not put in the requisite number of hours, bar council will de-recognize your degree. So this is important. Now coming to your theme very quickly, I'll just take a few minutes. Uh, One of my teacher used to say that there are only three things to study. Either you should do literature, whichever language you want to do, or you do sciences, or you do law. You cannot do law without history, without political science, without sociology, without philosophy, because law is truly interdisciplinary subject. In any case, the knowledge is always at the intersection of disciplines. And that is why not only the interdisciplinarity, but the integration of knowledge is important. Integration of knowledge is key. Law promotes integration of knowledge. And that is why this BLLB, BSC LLB, BTEC LLB 
If law school is successful here, I think we can think of starting a good BTEC LLB program, a good BSc LLB program. Moral sentiments of people. What is this whole idea of law? Does it really represent, as the topic of this evening says, which Tavre has never shared with me, by the way. <laughs> he never told me that I should speak on this topic. <laughs> but I just saw that this is the topic. You see, the principle as within first month, you must have read that uh, Latin maxim, ubi societas ibi just. Where there is a society, there is law. Law is there from cradle to grave. The moment you are born, your birth is registered under birth registration law. When you die, your death is registered under death registration law. When you get Aadhaar, there is a law. When you buy toothpaste, there is a law. Law of contract, law of sale of goods. When you transfer property to somebody, give some loan, there is a law. When you marry, there is a law, marriage registration law. Whether marriage is valid or void, it will depend on law. If your marriage is not working out, divorce has to take place, it will be under some law. If you die, the succession and inheritance will be under some law. So even after your death, your relationship with your children or others will be determined by your will, which is under the law of will or law of inheritance. So if law is everywhere, from cradle to grave, and there is a duty called ignorantia juris non excusat. Ignorance of law is no defense. So you may be a professor of botany or zoology and you may not know B or Z of botany or zoology. Chalega. There is no duty on you to know zoology or botany or history or Persian or English. But law imposes a duty on you to know law. Because ignorance of law is no defense. Whether you are a beggar on a street or you are a multi-billionaire, you must know the law. And the moment you land in any country, the laws of those countries become applicable on you and you must know the laws of those countries. So law originally started with religion. And people thought law is God-given. Of course, what was their idea of God, I am not going into that. Whether God created man or man created God, I am not going into that debate. Abhi yaan blasphemy ho jayegi. There is another law which will deal with this. What do you say about God? There is a law on this. But it all started with religion based on morality based on ethics, based on idea of justice. Then people said, well, nobody has seen God. So how do we say God gives law? Let us think of some human reason for law. And then they said, what distinguishes man from other creations? from this table and mic and from those trees and from the dog on the street, what distinguishes man? Kis cheez se ban gaya aap log ashrafakul makhlukat? Reason, intellect. You have reason. Reason is choice. You can do good things, you can do bad things, that's why there is an accountability for you but no accountability of trees and rivers and mountains because they don't have any choice. So if it is the reason which distinguishes men and women 
from other creations of God, the law must be based on reason and it should be the dictate of reason. And this gave birth to this natural law idea of law. And it was said that this is such a powerful idea that they said even God is bound by natural law. Even God cannot go, get, go against natural law. But this whole idea of God, of justice was vague. Therefore more definite understanding of law is to be evolved. And therefore we started saying, well law is the command of sovereign. So there is some king and whatever he says that becomes law. If you don't follow it, there is a punishment. Akbar ki zaban se nikla hua har lafz qanoon hai kind of a thing. Many democrats today think they are divine and many democrats today think whatever they say becomes law which is not true. Now in this idea, they said what law ought to be and what law is. These are two entirely different propositions. So there can be an unjust law. But it will remain a law because it is the command of the sovereign. The whole idea of whatever is ethical, moral, should alone be the law, that is a natural law theory, that was rejected. Those who developed this theory, they had served in the German army, therefore they thought of law in language of army, command. All laws are not command. Constitutional law is not command. It is only the criminal law which is command. As the Ten Commandments will say, thou shall not steal, thou shall not commit adultery. The contract law is not command. Then further de development, and they said, well, law is not made. Law is basically found in the society. And that is from where this topic is coming. That if you want to know law, go to the conscience of people, look at the national consciousness, look at the consciousness of the society. They said law grows in a society like a language. And therefore there should be no uniformity of laws. For each people there can be a different laws as Different people have different languages. Similarly, they can have different laws. Now, since these people looked in past that law grows and evolves like a language, it led to very serious consequences. It led to fundamentalism. It led to Nazism. It also led to communism. Nazism because they said, well, the German race has been superior, therefore it has a right to rule. Since they looked backward all the time, let us revive the glory of Islam and glory of Hinduism. So a lot of fundamentalism owes its origin to the historical school. And then of course the communists said that the history of the world is the history of class struggle. There have always been haves and haves not, which have been at loggerheads. So it led to three different kind of ideologies, fundamentalism, it led to Nazism, it led to communism. And then there were others who said, well, ultimately in the ultimate analysis, law is what the judges say and what the judges do. So the half a dozen old gentlemen sitting in Supreme Court decide what would be the law for any given society. And then, of course, the socialist school said that law is an instrument of exploitation. It is an instrument of oppression in the hands of the elite. The whole idea is that at the time of social contract, 
when I consented to the creation of a state and I agreed to obey the laws made by the state, I did not concede that they can come up with any law they want. And therefore I am bound as per the stumps of a social contract to the obedience of laws only when laws are just. People in Jalianawala Bagh were protesting against an unjust law, Rowlett Act. Gandhiji was going on Dandi March to break a law, an unjust law, the salt law. Gandhiji was refusing to obey the laws when he launched the civil disobedience movement. We will not obey your laws. And therefore, any law which is unjust, which is arbitrary, people are not bound to obey it. So triple divorce is arbitrary, therefore it is not law. Any law which gives excessive power to the state, which can be abused, is arbitrary and therefore it is violation of right to equality. All the black laws as they are called, TADA, UPA, NSA, POTA, why are they opposed by the civil libertarians? They say these are unjust laws. It is difficult to understand what is moral, what is justice. There is no unanimity on justice. Some say it is an idea of fairness. Some say it is an idea of equality. You may not understand justice. Fine. I think let us start understanding and feeling the pain when injustices are done. Do we feel that pain when people's houses are subjected to bulldozer and you call bulldozer justice? This is a contradiction in terms. Bulldozer justice cannot be justice. It is utterly unjust idea. Even if somebody has committed murder, you can't be bulldozing that house without the due process of law, without a proper trial, without the determination of guilt. Only that punishment can be given which is prescribed in law. For murder, bulldozing of house is not a punishment. What is a punishment? Death or life in prison. So even a murderer's house cannot be bulldozed. A young boy was killed recently because he was alleged to be involved in some kind of something to do with cow, a non-Muslim boy. That kind of killing is absolutely unjust. Do we really feel injustices? You have injustices all over in your society. The way we treat laborers, the way we treat daily wages, the way we treat people who work at home. This work at home is a dangerous proposition for workers. For the IT people, maybe they can work at leisure. But many Companies today employ women and men who work for 16 hours and no labor law is made applicable on them. Nike shoes which you make, you uh, wear, Nike as a company will make huge profits, but it will pay just two rupees to that woman who has stitched that one football or uh, one shoe. Do we understand and feel that injustices are there uh, in our society? And if we have that sense of injustice, 
then you would understand the idea of justice and theories of justice. Many believe that law is all about justice. No, it is all about power. Law is all about power. When you do law, you get power. You get empowered. The expectation is, now you will make your people empowered. Many of them do a lot of public interest litigation. Many lawyers argue cases for free, pro bono. But basically, law should ideally reflect and give us something like justice, but it has been converted into an idea of power. So if I have majority in parliament, I can pass any kind of law I want. Lot of debate is happening on the Waqf bill. Are Waqf is a private property. Somebody was an owner of that property. Is it not the law of ownership that I am the owner, I have a power to destroy my property, I have a power to gift my property, I will decide how that property is to be used even after my death. This is the law of the land, not only in India but in the whole world. Are we going to change this law? So looking at any law, it is a skill. You can go to America and study American law. How to read law, how to read case, this is a skill. You can go to any country in the world and study the, their law, argue on their law, become a lawyer in that country, and you pass some exam there and you will be enrolled. It is this idea of moral sentiments which were called the idea of a basic structure of the constitution. There are some permanent values. Yes, morality differs from time to time. So adultery was a serious crime. And now we say that no, if there are two consenting adults, law should not intervene. Decriminalization may happen in law, not in morality. It will remain immoral. It will remain a ground of divorce. Even today, it is a ground of divorce. It cannot be removed from there. Law cannot change the morality of a society. There are certain basic universal norms which are the moral sentiments of the society. Law should ideally reflect them. When it does not reflect them, it is the duty of the lawyers to lead the society. They know how laws are to be made. They know how much of the control can be there of people's freedoms. A lawyer must stand for those moral sentiments. Those moral sentiments are also incorporated in the fundamental duties of our constitution. So we must preserve our diverse composite cultural heritage. We must uphold the ideals of our freedom struggle. We must abjure violence. And we should not allow practices which are derogatory of women. And we should preserve our environment and reverse in uh, ecology. I believe that establishment of a law school would give a new direction to a university. In a legal also, very early, law school was founded because Sir Sayyid's son, Justice Mahmood, was a judge of Allahabad High Court, one of the first Indian who was appointed as a judge of a high court. So in 1881 itself, we got a law school there. You have got law school in Manu, as the first batch of students, ultimately what you achieve in your life would determine how the future generations of this school uh, would perform in their life. So set very high academic standards, high ethical and moral standards, and prove to the world 
that you can be better than any central university or any national law university. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your cogent message. We are charmed by your sharp eloquence. Thank you, sir, for your time. You have given us so much time for us. You have given us so much time for us. You have given us so much time for us. Now, you are giving us so much time for us. این الحسن صاحب محترم المقام لائق صد احترام شیخ الجامعہ عدیب العدبہ سر نے اپنی پی ایس ڈی جی این ایو سے فرمائی اور سر کے پاس تقریباً سیتیس سال سے زائد کا ٹیشنگ کے اندر تجربہ ہے سر کے انڈر میں سو سے زائد بچوں نے پی ایس ڈی کی ہے اس کے علاوہ مختلف موضوعات پر مختلف کتابیں سر نے لکھی ہے مختلف ریسرچ پیپرز لکھے ہیں الگ الگ کانفرنسوں کے اندر اور تینکیو ویری مچ in the name of the one who gave us life and wisdom. Now, all of us were enjoying and learning few things from Professor Fazan Mustafa as a, but uh, I'm sorry to say that you know, the, uh, Professor Fazan Mustafa is not an alien. Uh, and say to say that he is from, you know, another institution, or Professor, what has happened? Sure, it will not fall. Okay. Uh, for your kind information, that Professor Fadan Mustafa is adjunct professor of Maulana Azad National Urdu University. <laughs> officially, officially well recognized adjunct professor. So when you start giving credit, half credit to other institution and half at least, you know, to this university that, okay, Professor Faidan Mustafa is from there. Now, uh, it's very difficult to really, I mean, a multi-dimensional personality, and even, you see, after 50 odd, you know, meetings with Professor Faidan Mustafa, he's still unable to identify this man. Log kehte hain ke, تھوڑی سی ملاقاتیں کر لیجئے پتہ لگ جائے گا آدمی کیسا ہے اور کھل جائیں گے دو چار ملاقاتوں میں لیکن میرے لیے بہت ڈیفیکلٹ ہے پہچاننا آپ ہس رہے ہیں اس کا مطلعہ آپ پہچان چکے ہیں اوکے but you know frankly speaking I will say the kind of person you see and the way he perceives issues that's the quality of this man. I think, hey, log kam milte hain. Aur in se bar bar question ki jiya. When you will start questioning, you will get so many things. At a time, in one sitting, you see, you will acquire plenty of knowledge. This is how, you know, some rare pieces are there. Law is all about power. It's a statement, you know. One should have courage to make such a statement, you see. Law is all about power, grabbing power. Uh, and, you know, he's not talking in air. It happened in Greek society. The ancient Greek society. Uh, what Alexander was. Alexander, the conqueror of the world. And he was so proud. That, Look, I belong to a place which was built by a very strong hand. And what was the spirit of law there? There was a notion that there are two categories of people, stronger and weaker. Stronger is the maker of law. 
and that's how when their army officers lost the battle then the persecution is started because defeat they could not tolerate they could not digest and then army officers were executed those who fought for the country look at even what happened to socrates socrates entire philosophy was under question and he was made to consume poison slowly slowly he was poisoned and a great philosopher that time he could not write but his student wrote plato wrote everything all these things are available his own student now what happened on one hand you have law on the other in other hand we have some ethical notes now these two are confronting with each other and that's how he is making you know references of gandhi ji that dandi march or that namak or uh, disobedience all these things are happening because there is direct confrontation between the ethical norms values and the law and everything you will find within that canvas and you have to resolve the issue either i mean whether you want to become a lawyer or a liar that you have to decide so this is how my suggestion to you people say it now it is that look how my manu campus has become black and white let, let us make it black and white let us decipher what is black and what is white and the law law school see students coming out and just you see a 100 meters away with white apron some more students are coming don't confront with each other your purpose is different their goal is different so maintain your law to bahut aise aise kar rahe samajh mein aa gaya sab okay now you look at say i am glad that look is people kitne log hain jinhone sabse pehla black coat kharida hai isme पहला ब्लैक कोट खरीदने वाले मौजूद है यार एनी वे इट्स नाइस दैट यू आर सी रियली इन इन्वॉल्व गेट इन्वॉल्व इन टू अफेयर्स दैट विल हेल्प यू आउट वेदर योर अपियरेंस योर टॉक योर डिलीवरी योर अंडरस्टैंडिंग योर सिटिंग इन द क्लासरूम आउटसाइड द क्लास रूम टॉकिंग टू द टीचर्स and talking to administrative uh, administrate administration administrative staff and then in the hostel outside the hostel all these things will matter you have to place yourself in a perfect position that here is my place and then god will help you i am not here to deliver a long talk but yes i mean we we must learn and we must enjoy that's how you see the entire the crux of professor fazan mustafa's speech is that we enjoyed and we learned so many things but not the least rather let me also remind you there are many more steps ahead and always be careful one couplet in urdu i will recite which i recited in the morning also you see but for your your sake ke zameer bechne walon ne khoob kaam kiya jise uruj pe dekha use salam kiya so let us identify what is best for us and what is best for our university and all of us one day will sing a chorus song that okay hum honge kamyab thank you 
Thank you, sir, for sharing your thoughts and words of wisdom with us. Gratitude is the mother of all virtues. To extend our gratitude to all those who made this program a grand success, I take pleasure in inviting the class representative of BALLB, Mujahid, to propose the vote of thanks. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ladies and gentlemen, as we come to, know, uh, come to close the of, of today's wonderful event, we would like to take this opportunity to express our deepest gratitude to everyone who made this program a success. First and foremost, a big thank you to our esteemed chief guest, Professor Dr. Faizan Mustafa, whose insightful speech has truly enriched our experience today, your expertise and thought provoking words have left us with much to ponder and act upon. A special thanks to our respected Vice Chancellor, Professor Sayyid Ainul Hassan, for gracing us with his presence and for sharing their invaluable insight. Your wisdom and words of encouragement have truly inspired us all. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be with us. Your encouragement and enthusiasm have greatly enriched our fresher party, and we deeply appreciate your effort in making our new student feel welcome and valued. A very special thank to our esteemed Dean, Professor Dr. Tabres, sir. Dean, sir, your presence and support today have been invaluable. Hosting this fresher party is a testament to your commitment to creating a warm and welcoming environment for our new students. Your dedication to fostering a sense of community and belonging is a student in every detail of this evening. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be here with us and for personally hosting this event. Your leadership and enthusiasm set a positive tone for the year ahead and inspired us all to strive for excellence. We truly appreciate your continuous efforts to make our institution a place where every student feels valued and supported. And now a very special thanks to the mastermind uh, behind today's event, our dedicated coordinator, Dr. Sudhanshu Chandra. He is also our academic co coordinator. Sir, your hard work, creativity, and meticulous planning have been the driving force behind this fantastic uh, Freshers Party. From the seamless uh, organization to the vibrant atmosphere, Every detail has been perfectly executed. Thanks to your efforts, your dedication and commitment have ensured that this evening has been nothing short of spectacular. And thanks to our esteemed faculty members, <laughs> Professor Dr. Tosif Rahman, sir, Professor Mr. Tabish, sir, Professor Mr. Mudassir, sir, and Professor uh, Daud Ibrahim, sir, and Professor Mr. Shahid Mio, sir, and Professor Mr. Ahmed Raza, sir. Your presence here means a lot. Your encouragement, support, help to foster our welcoming and positive environment for our new students. For our new batch of students, thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to join today and for extending your warm welcome to our faces. And thanks to our speaker, uh, registrar Professor Ishtiaq Ahmed, and OSD1 Professor Shagufta Shaheen, and OSD2 Professor Siddiqui Muhammad Mahmood, and DSW head Professor Alim Alim Ashraf, and also Provost Professor Yusuf Khan, and others, Dean of respective department. Your presence here today has truly added to the joy and significance of this occasion. Your willingness to join us and share in the celebration with our new students speaks 
volumes about your dedication and commitment to fostering a supportive and in, uh, engaging academic environment. It's, uh, it's not every day that we get the chance to in, uh, interact with our professors outside the classrooms. And having, here, having you here with this evening has been both inspiring and encouraging for our freshers. Your presence has not only highlighted the close-knit community we are building here, but also underscored the genuine care and support that our faculty extend towards students. To our organizing team, volunteers, and the committee we made, and everyone working behind the scenes, thank you for your tireless efforts and dedication. Your hard work has been instrumental in ensuring that smooth flow of the event. And of course, a big thank you to our freshers. Uh, the star of the evening, you all shown so much enthusiasm and energy, and energy uh, making this event truly special. We hope that today has been a great introduction to the vibrant community you are now a part of. We look forward to many more amazing moments and experience with you throughout your journey at Manu. Last but not least, I want to express our heartfelt thanks to everyone who attended and contribute, contributed to making this party a grand success. Your participation and positive spirit have made all the difference. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. To evoke feelings of patriotism and remind you of the nation's glory and beauty, I request everyone to stand up in respect to our national anthem. Let's raise our voices in unison and sing our national anthem. <laughs> हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्चल जलधि तरंगा तव शुभ नामे जागे तव शुभ आशीष मागे गाहे तव जय गाथा जन गण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे